case, you have this 49 year old male patient, no reported trauma, and he came for ruling out deep vein thrombosis. Uh, the ultrasound was negative, but they found a cyst in the muscles and that's why they referred it to you for the MRI and you don't see any aggressive features and you wonder whether this is just an intramuscular ganglion cyst. We got a couple of answers already, but before we go in, I just want to go through the case myself. Um, so we need axial, maybe we need also a sagittal here. And um, based on these two, we can, I think we can start here. So we can see there is this cystic lesion here and we, it's sitting partially on top of the posterior aponeurosis of the medial gastrocnemius head here. And we see the plantaris here, plantaris uh, tendon coming down, which is continuous. So the cyst is kind of like here. And you see how the, and the posterior aponeurosis or the anterior aponeurosis of the soleus changes. So you can see here, it becomes very wavy. It's very irregular. We hardly see it here anymore. And then it comes again. So here we have a horizontal tear of this uh, post, no, anterior, uh, so aponeurosis of the medial gastrocnemius head. This one is the posterior soleus aponeurosis, which is fine. And this is a typical space where we get to see hematomas in these tennis leg situations where we have like these medial gastrocnemius injuries. So there is the horizontal tear starts here somewhere in this location. Uh, we can see further distally where we have the fusion of these two, you know, then it's fine. This is where the myotendinous junction is. And this is where we start to see a horizontal tear. It goes all the way here. Um, and on this image, this would probably translate into something like uh, from here, like it's torn in here. We can check later on a coronal or because you can see the orientation is not quite right, but there is a horizontal tear. And what can sometimes happen is we get an additional longitudinal tear uh, cranially, and I'm not sure. I think here we have the cyst protruding in, so I'm suspecting there has been also an injury here, maybe uh, like a horizontal tear, or if it's just compressed, or you know, we don't really know that. I don't see like a, a typical stair pattern or something because this seems to be more like a little bit longer ago. Uh, let me see if we can identify anything in the other plane. Sometimes the T1. This is a, it is the same. Um, let's see what else we got. No diffusion is not helpful. This one, yeah, maybe this one. So basically what I'm trying to find is if there is a, you know, an extension of the tear cranially, like to the head, or if it's just a pure horizontal tear. Most often we have an additional longitudinal component to these middle gastrocnemius injuries. Um, here, let me see this one. So we see the horizontal tear all the way to here. And from here, I, I would assume there is some form of a gap or there has been like a, you know, a longitudinal component here for this cyst or for this, you know, cyst or hematoma, whatever we will call it in the end, protrude into the muscle itself. Um, let's also look at the T1, something with without fat set, and see whether this is truly intramuscular or, or not. This one again is the same, it's not helping, sagittal, I want the coronal now. So here, again, we can go to the tear, we see the horizontal tear here, so somewhere at this level there was a horizontal tear of the uh, anterior gastrocnemius aponeurosis of the middle head. And maybe there was a longitudinal component up here as in a L pattern. So basically they tear in like this. So that's the tear pattern, horizontal and then longitudinal in this acute calf injuries. And there's a great article on rod source, which explains the anatomy and everything in a lot of detail. And you can see here the, the anatomy, so anterior gastrocnemius aponeurosis and then the soleus aponeurosis and everything. But I want to go down to the pair, tear pattern. So it typically starts medially at this edge and then it can propagate cranially and you can see these nice images here in acute cases. Sometimes you can also have like this U pattern and then the stair pattern. There are different types. Uh, it's sometimes not so easy to get this uh, correctly, but I think in your case we can call this a tear. We can call it like L, you know, L pattern tear with a longitudinal extension up to this point. So we can even measure this. I would probably measure this up to this point here, like something like 
maybe seven, eight centimeters, uh, or from here to there, it's a bit less, 7.5, with um, some subacute hematoma here in this space between the posterior solis epineurosis and the anterior gastrocnemius epineurosis with a cyst or seroma, I think I would call it a seroma formation, which protrudes into the medial gastrocnemius head. But I don't think it's truly intramuscular or maybe partially. I think it's protruding through the longitudinal tear of this epineurosis and uh, pushes inside the muscle. And the fascia, we can see it's encasing this. And I think you gave contrast. So let's go have a look at the contrast scan. And so we see it's not enhancing. It's not something like a synovial sarcoma. Uh, we see the granulation tissue, which is vividly enhancing in between here, indicating there is uh, this, there is this uh, repair tissue going on. And I think we can also nicely see how there is a extensive tear of the anterior gastrocnemius epineurosis all the way here. And you can see how the epineurosis distally is okay. And then it's torn here, a little bit a gap, and then it should come again here in this other area. So that's, uh, yeah, I think that's probably the, the way to go. So post-traumatic subacute injury to the medial gastrocnemius. It doesn't necessarily need to be an acute injury. It could be like from playing sports or, or whatever. Patient doesn't maybe recall a distinct trauma. And now it's just this aroma and, uh, you know, the changes that continue being problematic for him. The diffusion here doesn't really show any uh, restricted diffusion. So it's just a T2 shine through then. Okay.